Hi gang, this is Scott, N3FJP, and as a supplement to my webpage that documents my dipole and loop wire antennas, I thought I'd throw this video together real quick to help you visualize what's going on. We're looking up at the house, and you see my low tri-bander. That's up at about 25 feet. My wire antennas outperform the tri-bander because they are about six tenths of a wavelength above ground. With the exception of 10 meters, the, the tri-bander might be a little bit better on 10. Um, but uh, not by much, and my wires are definitely uh, better on 15 and 20. So that's up at the house. The coax runs down to the woods um, where I have my antennas. And I actually have a, a two switch boxes. One is for uh, the second station, station B, and uh, we're, we're going to walk down now to the, uh, the primary, and I'll uh, zoom in on that for you. Okay, so we'll walk down, and the coax comes from the house to this switch box. I have loops. And we'll uh, look up here. And I don't know if these are going to show up in the video or not, but uh, I have 20, 15, and 10 delta loops that are nested. Those are radiating northeast, southwest. So that works out really well for Europe. It's also good for the uh, east coast. This still image of the three nested delta loops radiating northeast is a little bit easier to see. For the northwest southeast direction, I have dipoles. In the past, I have had these dipoles and loops oriented to radiate the same direction, and they work just about the same. So if you were to ask me which antenna to use, I would say uh, either is fine, whatever is easiest for your location. Now in the case of the dipoles, I have one line that goes up over the tree, it comes down. and is wrapped around the tree here. I have 20, 15, and 10, and the coaxes for all three coming down the center. One line on the center, to which they are all three tied. I can lower them down anytime I like just by unwrapping them from the tree and bringing them down. And that's all there is to it. And I switch direction just by the switch box. Here you see the stacked dipoles for 20, 15, and 10 meters. 20 at the top, 15 in the middle, and 10 at the bottom. And here is a concept drawing for the design. The key to getting good performance from your dipole is placing it 6 tenths of a wavelength above ground. At 6 tenths of a wavelength high, you have 8.71 dBi of gain. But if you lower a 20 meter dipole to just 20 feet above ground, not only does your gain drop to 6.15 dBi, but much worse, all your energy is going nearly straight up. You've got a cloud burner. You're not going to work nearly as much DX and cover as much area with this type of antenna configuration. This chart shows the dimensions and target heights for dipoles for each of the HF bands. Now most of us can't reach the target heights on the low bands but in that case just go as high as you can. And while we're down here I also will show you the I have the 40 meter sloper. The uh, high part is uh, up about 70 feet in the tree 
and slopes down and configured similarly here's my 80 meter dipole again it's set up as a sloper one end is probably just about uh, seven feet off the ground and the other end probably about 80 feet up in the tree shot these up with an easy hang slingshot the remote switch box is absolutely the way to go you uh, save all those coax bronze. I'm about 150 feet from the from the house. It only requires a very light cable, four conductor cable to control all eight switches. You can control your direction. So um, it, it's a, it's not only is it convenient, it actually saves you money in the long run. So I highly, highly recommend using a remote switch box as you set up your antennas. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Again, my name is Scott, N3FJP73. Take care. God bless.